Hey everyone, today I'm going to be testing if drinking apple cider can kill you. So you may have been warned before to not eat apple seeds. And the reason is because apple seeds have a molecule in them called amygdalin. And amygdalin, when it reacts with enzymes in your body and also in different parts of the fruit itself, it can react with the nitrile group on the amygdalin, so that CN group there. It can react with it and form toxic cyanide. So that means that eating enough amygdalin will release cyanide in your body and can lead to cyanide poisoning. Now it's actually pretty interesting why this even exists in fruit. And actually it's not just apples, stone fruits have them in general. Almonds, apricots, peaches, plums. So in order for amygdalin to release the cyanide, it has to react with a specific enzyme called beta-glucosidase. And the amygdalin and that specific enzyme are kept in different parts of the fruit. So the only way they can mix together is when a predator comes and eats it and chews up everything together and then it releases that toxic cyanide. So basically it's a defense mechanism for anything trying to eat it. For example, does normal apple juice or apple cider have cyanide in it? Because what if when they press the apples, when they cold press the apples to make this apple cider, what if they crush some of the apple seeds in there? Does that mean that there's cyanide now in the apple juice? Well, I'm going to test that out today. Okay, so first we'll test if this apple cider has cyanide in it. Okay, so this is non-filtered apple juice, so potentially any seeds that have gotten ground up may have gotten in here. So let's see if it's actually enough to be able to detect the cyanide in it. Okay, so I'm gonna put around two milliliters in here. And I'd like to thank Blinkist for sponsoring this video. Now I really love to read books, but with my high paced schedule, it's really hard to find the time to actually sit down and read a whole book. And that's why I love Blinkist. Blinkist takes the main essential components from a book and condenses them down to around a 15 or 20 minute read. And I really like this because there may be some books that you're not quite sure about. You don't really want to invest the time to read the whole book. You can actually read them in Blinkist first, and if you really enjoyed it, then you could go back and read the whole thing. And I like to use Blinkist to replace wasted time on my phone. So whenever I was going to get on my phone and just do something that was a waste of time, I get on Blinkist instead and actually learn something. For example, two books that I just finished today are Carl Sagan's The Cosmos and Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time. I highly recommend you read both these books. So if you want to check out Blinkist, the first 100 people to go to Blinkist.com slash The Action Lab will get a full week of unlimited access. And also you'll get 25% off if you want to purchase the full membership. And thanks again to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. Now let's continue on with the experiment. So this first strip I'm going to put in here is an activator strip. So basically this is going to activate the cyanide by turning it to cyanogen chloride. And then I'm going to put a second strip in that if there's any chloride, if there's any cyanide present in there, then the strip will turn blue. So I do this for 30 seconds. Okay, the moment of truth. Let's dip in our second strip and see if there's actually cyanide in here. If it turns blue, there's cyanide. Here we go. No cyanide in here. I thought we'd actually get a little bit of blue here. These test strips can go down to 0.2 parts per million. So I thought maybe we'd be able to detect a little bit, but it looks like uh, for the amount of seeds that could possibly get crushed in here, the volume is just so much that it's insignificant. Sometimes I make uh, fruit shakes at home and I like to put like a whole apple in, but I've been worried about does that cause there to be too much cyanide in the shake that I'm making because of the apple seeds that are getting blended up. So let's just blend up a whole apple as if I'm putting it in a shake and then test if there's enough cyanide in to detect. Okay, here we go. A whole apple blended up. Let's test if there's cyanide in it. Three, two, one. Hey, Blendtex can peel apples.
Just gonna mix a little water with it so it'll actually mix up. Okay, I think we blended that up good. Okay, I'm just gonna filter some of this out. Mm, look at that good apple cider. Okay, let's pour around two and a half milliliters in. Okay, the first strip is just the activator. Okay, now we're gonna dip in the reactive strip. If this turns blue, it means there's cyanide in my sample. Okay, three, two, one. Okay, I don't see any blue to this at all. Any blue tint at all. Okay, so this is actually pretty surprising too. I thought we might see a little bit in this since I blended up the whole apple. For sure all the apple seeds got blended up and mixed with the enzymes in the apple. So we should see some cyanide in there. So let's just take it to the next level and see what it looks like if I just blend up just seeds and see if there's cyanide in there. So this is from a previous video where I crushed it in my hydraulic press and then tested it. Okay, apple seeds crushed by hydraulic press to extract cyanide. Three, two, one. There we go. Squeeze out the poison. Okay, I want that apple seed juice. Okay, so that's what I want right there. Let's see how much cyanide is in this. Okay, so I'm going to squirt some water on this. Okay, then I'm gonna suck all this back up as best I can. Okay, shall we see if there's any cyanide in our apple seeds? Uh oh, <laughs> that immediately turned blue, wow. <laughs> wow, I didn't expect that. Look at that, <laughs> that's pure blue. Okay, on our test chart here, <laughs> that is that is dark blue. I'd say that's greater than 10 parts per million. <laughs> wow. Okay, so it looks like drinking apple juice is not going to give you cyanide poisoning. Even blending up an apple whole isn't gonna give you cyanide poisoning. That actually puts to rest a long time concern I've had about putting whole fruits in, in shakes when I make them. So I don't have to worry about that anymore, it looks like. So in general though, apples have a low amount of amygdalin in them compared to other stone fruits, like apricots or even cherries have a lot in them. So to be on the safe side, I wouldn't eat apple seeds, but it looks like in general from just the effect of crushing up apple seeds, it looks like it gets diluted so much that it's not gonna really do anything to you even if a few apple seeds get blended up in the drink that you're making. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified of my latest videos out and check out theactionlab.com to see the Action Lab subscription box. 